Hey everyone, it's Rob here from Octagon and welcome to our fourth week of the Divi UI Challenge. So this is our, our fourth tutorial, which is pretty cool. And um, yeah, so what you should see now on your screen is what we'll be building this week, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like a, um, I guess what you'd say like is a user dashboard. So if you had some sort of membership site or something like that, that you display various information, um, yeah, this is the sort of thing that you might expect to see. I mean, obviously what you're seeing here is not um, is not a functional dashboard, so these these stats aren't you know being pulled from any sort of database or anything like that. But obviously, remembering that the the Divi UI challenge, the whole purpose of it is just to just to design things and, and make things just for the sake of it, just for the fun of building something that looks good. So um, this is what we'll be making today, which I think is really nice. Obviously, we got, I got three tiles here, um, but we won't be making the second and third tile. Um, we'll just be making the first one. And um, yeah, I think with what we got, what we cover in producing this one here, should enable you to produce these, this second and third one. Um, so yeah, let's get stuck into it. So over on WordPress, I've hit um, new page. So we just let's just call this one. Uh, let's call it user dashboard. Um, as normal, when we're just producing things like this, it's always handy to do a blank page. Where let's just I'm just gonna hit publish. I guess you don't really need to do that. I'm running on a on a local website as well. So I'm just on my local machine, so this isn't going live anywhere, which is good. Um, use Divi Builder, and this week we're actually going to use the Visual Builder for a change. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Some people have different opinions about it, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm finding that for my uh, workflow, it's actually doing some really good things. Cool, so let's set this page up. First of all, we're gonna set a bit of a background color. Now I've got a bunch of colors here that we'll be using throughout. Um, a couple of blues, a couple of yellows, and a beige. And it's this beige here that we're gonna run for the background. So I think I need a hash there, there we go. Save that, and for our columns, we'll do three columns. Uh, let's don't worry about modules for now, and I'm, I'm going to make it full width, um, gutter width. I think we're okay. Row settings. Okay, let's let's stay in here for a little bit, and let's set up what the backgrounds are of each of these tiles. So we can get the white with the blue line, yellow. Blue, um, and what you what we will quickly realize is that these tiles are um, actually containing a, a couple of modules, and we're wrapping them up together by styling the column itself, and that's what you see over here in your row settings. So we're going to go to design. I'll just drag this over here so you can see the column num column number one. Scroll down a little bit. Um, we go column one background. Let's. Give it a white background. Column on padding, uh, it's 40. Oops. Um, and obviously if we were doing all the other columns as well, we'd go through and do those individually, but we'll just leave those for now because we're gonna focus on our first column only or tile number one. A couple of things in custom CSS as well. So what we wanna do is find the CSS field for column one main element. One first is we're going to go border, two pixels, solid, we're going to grab that blue. So a hash, oops, blue, now hex copa blue, close that line. Um, I'm also going to give it a border radius of six pixels. I think that's what we had, looks about right. And we're also gonna give it a box shadow. Now, cssmatic.com slash box shadow is a great little generator. And I've said it before, um, box shadows are a little bit fiddly in CSS. And I mean, it's when you're using generators like this, it's good to know what it's producing for you. So it's good to have, good to have an understanding of the, of the structure of the code that it's producing. But once you have an understanding, it's it's perfectly fine. You don't have to write from scratch. So I am going to go 0, 10, blur radius. I think 50 should be good. Shadow color black is good. And I'm going to bring this right down 
to 0.15, it looks pretty nice. So just copy that. There we go, that looks good. Great, so let's um, start building out our components. So if we look at what we've got here, we've got um, this little menu icon. It doesn't actually do anything, but it looks cool. Remember, like I said, we're just making things because it looks nice. Got the profile image, um, bit of text, and a one of the counters. I think it's called bar counter. I'll remind myself shortly. So let's start with the um, yeah the actually let's start with the profile stuff, the profile image and the name and position and stuff like that, or name and, and, and company. So let's go here. Person module. Name. Let's go me. So Rob Stinson. Position. Um, I said. Octagon and that which is sort of company, but let's just go like this CEO of Octagon Sounds pretty impressive Image URL. So this is where we want to grab the profile. So there's My face right there No animation. Hey, let's I don't often do animation, but let's do it. So bottom to top Text color dark. That's great. We won't worry about all that perfect design icon color we can ignore Head of font. Okay, the font that we use throughout this design is one called Ubuntu, and um, I really like it. I really like it, especially for um, I, th I don't know. I like I like using it for dashboard style interfaces, and I'm not sure why, um, but it's a really nice sans serif font. Reduce that a little bit. Go 16 pixels. Header text color. I think this is what it's already set at, but I'm just going to set it to that. You can when you. A little pro tip here is when you're doing hex colors in CSS, which is what this is, you can, um, and you've got repetitive like six threes, you can actually shorthand it by just doing three threes like that. And that's why I picked it up when I, when I just did the first three. So that and that mean the same thing in CSS. So that's pretty cool. Head a lot of spacing. Let's leave that. Body font. I want Ubuntu as well. Um, body text color. Um, I think I was running with that. Looking good. That's right. For the header, I also did all caps and bold. Slightly darker, isn't it? There we go. That looks good. Doesn't have to be exactly the same. And I think that's all right for now. Cool. Okay, let's jump over to custom CSS because we're going to do a couple of things. Main element, you know, text align center. That brings everything into the middle. Member image. Let's set the max width of, oops, typo. There we go. That's a bit big. 120 looks good. Border radius. Um, I know I can do 50% because I know my image is perfectly square. Now it's interesting if you run 50% on a non-square image, you will end up with an oval. So that's something you just have to be aware of. Um, and I just know that I also have to go overflow hidden to get it. It depends on what you're working with and what theme and what other CSS is being applied. Um, whether or not you have to apply use overflow or not, but in this case you do. I'm also going to give it um, border two pixels solid. I'm going to use our oops, our yellow. Actually, maybe I'll use four pixels. Yep, a bit bigger as well. So let's drop that to hundred. And lastly, we're going to bring that over into the center by giving a bit of margin. Um, I'll actually do this all in one. I will go auto, I will go 20 pixels just to get there. So the 20 pixels is what's sitting below there. So yeah, you can short, I could have gone margin 
left and margin right and margin top and done them all individually, but you can sort of shorthand or bring them all together by doing things like that, which is good. That looks pretty good. So let's do that. What else have we got? We've got the bar counters. So that's the next one we're going to do. It is called bar counters. Great. Let's add first item. And I'm sort of implying that these are, I don't know, projects that are being worked on and that's the progress that they're being made. Carrying over the space theme from last week. So let's go NASA. Percent, what did we go there? We went 68%. Next one was SpaceX. Apologies if I'm just toggling back and forth really quickly. Hopefully that's not too confusing for you. Um, SpaceX was 42%. Duplicate that one. Jump in there. What was the other one? Virgin Galactic. And we did that at 84. We might as well maintain it. Cool. All right. That's got the content there. Background color and bar color. So my background color. Okay, so we're working with our blue and our light blue. So light blue, that one there. Great. And the blue. Use percentages, yes, you can you know toggle that on or off as you please, but I like the look of it. Design bar top padding and bottom padding. You can increase the size of the bars by doing that, but I'm happy with how they look. Border radius. Um, so this just takes a little bit of playing. Cool. 12 pixels give us the rounded edges. Remember how I said if you don't have a perfectly square image or element and you go 50%, you get some pretty crazy oval um, effects. So that's a good example of it there. So if we just use pixels, that gives us a little bit more uh, what we want. Total font, Ubuntu, good old Ubuntu. Font size is fine. Title text color. Oops, forgot my hash. That looks good, that looks good. Looking pretty close. Ah, here we go. That's what we want. What we want um, font size for percent's good. That's all. For that, I'm just going to hit save. One thing about the Visual Builder is it gives you very close to what you see on the actual front end. One thing I have noticed is that occasionally um, spacing, styling, so things like margin and padding is a little bit different. So what's always good to do is if I just open this one in a separate tab, it'll open up the front end. And it may be exactly right. There you go, perfect example. This, see the space there? And compared to what we actually get on the front end is slightly different. So it's always good to actually check the front end, even when you're building with the front end editor, it's always good to still check what it looks like. And that we are getting very close to what we want. The final thing, a little bit of padding different to what I had earlier, but that's fine, is this little menu icon. So this is cool. So back to our front end editor, I'm gonna chuck in. Now I'm just using a blurb actually, because I know that actually, Blurbs give you the ability to use icons. There may be some of the other modules that allow you to do it, but this one came to mind for me anyway. So that one looks like the, um, you know, like a little menu icon. So icon color, just go that light gray. Um, yep, oh, that's what I want to turn off animation. I know I want to do that. Icon font size, we just need to bring that down. So what's 40 look like? Not a bit too big, 30, that looks good. 
And I think that's all we have to do in terms of settings. If we go CSS, main elephant position. Now I highly recommend getting your heading, getting your head around. If you want to get your head around CSS, one of the big aha moments is when you understand positioning. It's it is difficult to explain, but once you get your head around it, it it really makes it, it really helps you understand how um, elements are positioned on a page by CSS. So definitely spend some time studying that. So anyway, we've done position absolute. I'm going to go top twenty pixels. Go right twenty pixels. It's pretty good to me. I think the other thing I did was. Um, I chucked a, just a hash in there for the URL, for the blurb. So hit save, save. There we go. I reckon that is pretty cool. And like I said, with what we've just covered there, I reckon you can go ahead and you can um, build out these sorts of things for yourself. But uh, thanks for joining us for week four of the DBUI challenge. And um, yeah, I'll see you next week.